to his house. Amen. Amen. Without further delay, let's share the word of God. The theme says recovery from spiritual burnout. Or to be revived in spiritual manner uh, to be yourself again. This second quarter of April, May, and June, it is a quarter for recovery. This year is for the Lord's attention to his people. So God is also caring about the cries of his people. And in this year, he brings healers and solutions to our lives. In this quarter, we are going to be able to do in April, we will uh, study on recovering from spiritual and emotional wounds. Because this is the quarter of recovery and healing. Many people are sick in their emotions because of the things that happen to them. And even in the spirit, you can be discouraged. That is a disease. That is a spiritual disease. So God has a good plan to heal us. May we will talk about family recovery. Families are sick. And when families are sick, there is no peace in the country, there is no peace at work, there is no peace in the household. And in May, we are going to focus on family recovery. In June, we will talk about financial recovery. Many people have issues in their finances. Whether it's in their family or in the nation or even in the household. Poverty is a disease. And it's a disease that can be cured. Poverty is not a permanent state that someone should be in until they die. But poverty is a street that you go through. It's a valley that you go through. And you get to a point where you cross and climb the mountain. And there are some who are financially sick. They work hard but don't see any profit. Many projects and businesses that people started are bankrupt. Many people get to a working business after failing many times. That is the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty. Loss. The spirit of loss. Many people it's a small animal that goes and eats up the possessions of the of wealth of someone and you are, when you are able to remove it you can go on and carry on. in these three months we talk about recovery emotionally and recovering in our family and in our finances so this month we are talking about recovering from spiritual and emotional wounds this week that is ending today we are going to talk about recovering from spiritual burnout
that is like revival and longing for the things of God again. Ichandiswe tugendera ho nabami bambere igice cha 19 ku murongo wa mbere kwa kwa 8. We are going to talk about 1 Kings 19 1 to 8. Bibiliya and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Jezebel atuma intumwa kuri Eliya ati ejo magingwa ya ninza abantara kuvutsa ubuzima bwawe nkuko wabuvukije bari abahanuzi imana zizabimpore ndetse bikomeye. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if I may, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Eliya byumvise atyo arahaguruka arahunga ngo yikize aji Berisheba yibuyuda abari hasiga umugarago we. And when he saw that he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and his servant and he left his servant there. Ariko aragenda ariko agenda wenyine urugendo rw'umunsi umwe mwishamba. And But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said it is enough now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my fathers. Nuko yidya mira musi igiti chumorote mu arasinzira. Agi sinziri emareika araza mukoraho aramu gira tibzi ukuri. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, "Arise and eat." Arakangu kavu no musi muta zekumakara na gachuma kama zibiri kumusegowe. Aradia aranywa arongera idya mira. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Marika uiteka agarukubga kaviri amukorohara mubira tibzu kuri kukurugendo ariruni ni rukukomere. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, "Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you." Nukorabzu karagi aranywa iyonda aigendra hui bini sibirongui na majoro mirongui ne ageri hore boku musozi wiman. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Benedat. Brethren, this man is called Elijah. Elijah means the Lord is God. Even the name itself, it talks about God. The Lord is God. That's what Elijah meant. Eliyahu. Eliyahu. El Yahweh. O El Yahweh. Imana Yehovah. The God is Lord. Irizina rye yarizina ryikimana. His name was a divine name. A theophoric name. It was theo- theophoric name. Nukvongo ndizina ririmo ubumana. It is a, a name that has God in it. Kandi rikaba izina ryubuhanuzi. And it was also a prophetic name. Uyu Eliya. This Elijah. Yakinze imvura. He shut the rain. And he captured the clouds. In a very special way. And the earth could not find rain for three years and a half. And one morning he woke up. In the clouds that had no rain. He created the rain. The rain came down. I want you to understand the power that he has. He got this power from prayer. And his fellowship with God. But especially. Even reading the word of God and walking according to it. Because what he did. He said, I do it because of your word. He would follow the word and walk accordingly. When he was in a far country, in Sidon or Lebanon, today, God told him to go and present himself to Ahab. He left that country and went. And he told Ahab, Call everyone that we can meet at the Mount Carmel. 
this Ahab was looking for him to kill him. And the Bible says, there is no country that he did not seek Elijah. And he went and made a king swear of, of those countries that they did not hide him. This Elijah was being looked for. But God told him, arise and present yourself to Ahab. The person who is chasing after you, he stood before him. Ahab could not kill him. But he asked him, what should I do? I'm sending you Israel. Call for Israel that we can meet on the mountain. The king did so and he brought the entire nation on the mountain. Thousands and thousands of people. After that, what did he do? They called upon the fire. Those who prayed for, to idols, their idol did not bring the fire. Baal did not bring the fire. Asherah did not bring the fire. But the God of Elijah brought the fire down. Afterwards he said, you people, these uh, prophets have lied to you catch them so that we can kill them on the river of Gishon. That day he removed idolatry in the land. What business was that for? It was the business of Jezebel. Because those prophets they made the influence of Jezebel to be strong in the country. The country. They killed them all and then he told Ahab, Ahab he said, Ahab, I have killed all the prophets of your wife and everybody. Okay. The rain hasn't come for many years. Go and eat and drink and then run to your house. There will be an abundant rain so it doesn't catch you on the way. There was no rain at the time. I have obeyed. He ran and ate. And he told him, take your chariot and run. And Elijah went on the mountain. He called for the rain. After praying seven times, the rain came down. And Israel was amazed. This is the man we are talking about. He was a great man. He had great power. He had fought against the enemy. He had fought against giants. He called upon the things that could not be called upon. He called something from emptiness. Because of his word, things were created. And he had no fear. Because he came to those who were chasing after him. He had a special spirit. And he had that power. But the story that we just read is very sad. When Ahab went home, he told his wife what happened. Just as when you go home, you tell your husband or you tell your wife what happened. Or maybe sometimes you are crying. But this was not a story to be kept. Because the prophets had to come and share a meal with Jezebel. And Jezebel had cooked for food. And she could not find anybody to eat the food. And the men went and said, Why did you cook? Did you know what happened? On the mountain? No. And the woman started asking why they are not preparing the food. And they say, honey, please come so we can talk. And uh, Jezebel started saying, please prepare for prophet so and so because they lack this kind of food. 450 prophets. No, 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 80. 850 prophets share a meal with Jezebel. That day, they could not eat any food because they had killed them on the river. Kishon. I want you to look at this scene. The other one is home. They are cooking because they went and fought and came back. And the man said, Honey, 
I met with Elijah and he asked me to come to people and prophets. We went to the mountain and he told them to call Baal. Baal did not respond. But when he called upon the God of Israel, he responded and the public got angry. They took all the prophets and killed them. So I'm coming on my own to come and give you the news. He said, what? Who killed them? It's Elijah. Inde? Who? Inde? Who? Ni Elijah. Elijah. Inde? Who? Elijah. 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 Elijah killed them. Kanaka this person died. Ni, ni he says, She's, he's the one who died first, honey. But, Even the other one was caught. He said, he, he was beheaded without any And she asked for details of how each person died. Ahab gave her details and the woman says stop. You can stop. You can stop. And he said Ngwejo he, she sent a messenger to Elijah saying, let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow. A person went to Elijah. Jezebel told me, start to count from this hour I'm talking to you. Tomorrow about this time, around this time, you will be killed with the sword like those prophets. When Elijah heard this, he ran away. My question is this. How can someone who brings down the fire, someone who brings down the rain, someone who stops the rain, can run away because of someone's voice. That is what we call spiritual burnout. This spiritual burnout is what I'm going to discuss with you. I will talk about two things. Number one, the signs that show spiritual burnout. The second, the reasons that cause spiritual burnout. Or that cause your emotions to uh, burn out. Your confidence would run out. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, Praise the Lord. Okay, I want you to give me your ears and your heart for just a short time. If you have a short the signs that show that a person has spiritual burnout, five of them. What we show you that you are burnout. Yes, sometimes you can feel it or not, but it's going to happen. To be spiritually burned out. The first one. Taking time to think about what people are saying rather than listening to God's direction. I repeat. Taking time to think about what people are saying rather than listening to God's direction. When people start saying, what did they say about me? Even that person is gossiping about me. What did they say? Did they talk about me? Anything that happens, you want to know what happened for them to talk about it. If you cannot be patient, your emotions are sick. Or your spirit is down. To take time to think about people 
gossip or say to spend time thinking about people's words. Because there are times you even want to know the source of the gossip and you start asking who told who until you get to the source. That anyone who is shaken because they were talked about it is a sign of spiritual burnout. But someone who is not tired they talk and go home. And sometimes when dogs bark you don't stand and wait and find out why they are barking the same thing if someone is talking about you and you want to pay attention to it you are spiritually burned out we read Jezebel told Elijah we read say, the verse that says, Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. God told Elijah, come from Sarfet, and go present yourself to Ahab in Israel. Can this person be scared of Jezebel? Who sent him? Simana. It's God. I, I would laugh. Jezebel is saying, Tomorrow she is going to kill. Does she know who sent him? Does she know who brought him? Here? The one who says that is strong in the spirit. But the one who is burned out, they start getting scared. Jezebel said that. Let me tell you where she found her in the prophets that she, he just killed. Once you have removed someone's power, someone's foundation, how can you be as afraid of that person? That is a sign. That the person has a low battery in the spirit. The second, the second sign. It is to agree with the spirit of intimidation. The spirit of intimidation. To agree with the spirit of intimidation. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Even fear comes from hearing the words of Jezebel. Why faith comes from hearing the word of God, intimidation or fear comes from the person who is trying to intimidate us. The spirit of fear enters and it starts working on your mind and it tells you you are dead. Look at verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. When Elijah heard this, did he ask for God? It's because he agreed with this spirit. Otherwise, he would have said Jezebel that. Jezebel is saying she's going to kill you. Yesterday I spent time with his, her husband and he didn't say he's going to kill me. But his wife is saying he's going to kill me. Who is stronger between a husband and a wife? 
a husband is a king and the, uh, her uh, wife is a queen who is who has the army so mugabo is in it the man niba taratinya umugabo ni kutagiye gutinya umugore utagira ingabo if he did not fear the man why is he going to fear the woman who has no army icyakabiri the second thing imana niyo yavuze ngo nze god told me to come no ne ninde umbwiye ngo mpunge so who who is asking me to run away imana is it god ninde who is it yezebel it's jezebel kuki eliya yirutse why did elijah run away yemezanyije ni litera bwo he agreed with this intimidation igiye cyose wemeranya nubwoba every time you agree with fear uzafata ibyemezo bihubutse you will fa- you take uh, knee jerk decisions uzafata ibyemezo uhubutse you will take knee jerk decisions icyagatatu kimenye cyagatatu the third sign no kwigunga kwiyumva kuri wenyine self isolation or loneliness kwigunga self isolation ukiyumva ko uri wenyine and you feel you are alone eliya maze kumva ibi when elijah heard this he said i am dead because i'm alone ku murongo wa gatatu no wa kane verse 3 and 4 baravuga ngo it says ngo asiga umugaragu we agenda wenyine urugendo rw'umunsi umwe mu ishamba ariko ni mu butayo he left his servant there he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness uzo yo musore do you know this young man niwe bagendanye giye kireke he's the one who walked with him for a long time niwe bakoranye giye yarakomeye mu mwuka he's the one who worked with him when he was strong in the spirit yari masenga when he was praying niwe yoherezaga kureba uko igicuka imeze he was the one he would send to see the cloud subira ibyo kureba sha go back and check mu giye cyo gukomera in the time of strength yaramukeneye he needed him yarasengaga he would pray undi akajya kureba and the other one would go and look agasenga he would pray undi akajya kureba the other one would go and look ariko maze kwemezanya nubwoba but after he had agreed with fear yumvise ko kwigunga kaba wenyine he felt like self isolation arebza yumuri bimufitiye akamara was better for him nubo numuntu aragenda kifungira na wenyine if you see someone self isolated nashaka kuvugana na na family they don't want to talk to their family agafunga they just shut their door kurya ntarye they don't eat agahera mu gitanda they stay in their bedroom ntavuga they don't talk akifungira no mucyumba they just lock their akiyorosa they they move around abari mu bihe bikomeye they are in t- the terrible times uyu muntu abari mu bihe bigoye this person is in difficult times abari mu giye chamaranga mutima ye ari hasi their emotions are down mu buryo bwo mu mwuka ari hasi spiritually they are down mwakomanga ntakingo when you knock they don't open mwamuhamagara kurya ntari when you call them to eat they don't eat akaba mu gitanda they stay in their bedroom mwamuna ryamanya ntavuga when you sleep together they don't even talk to you aba bantu these people babari muri cyagihe are in the time hari intimidation yishye hari amajwi menshi bumvisha where they have heard too many words of intimidation hari amagambo menshi ibinyoma bakiri there are too many lies that they have received tibareka ngo umwuka wera baganire and they did not allow the holy spirit to speak to bamenye ukuri kw'ibintu to know the truth ariko akigunga but they they isolate themselves uyu mwuka wo kwigunga this spirit of isolation nikimenye tso ku muntu mu baranga mutima yaguye is a sign that the emotions of that person has shogora ko bari so ari mama wawe ari umwana wawe ari umuvandimwe wa it may be your father your mother or your relative ibintu bimenye tso ko ari mu bihe bitamworoheye this is a sign that they are in difficult times uwaru mukeneye uwaru mufitiye akamaro ico giye nabakimukeneye the one that they need normally they reject ubundi yarakeneye umuntu baganire he needed someone to talk to ngabwira uyu muhungu to say to this boy but say listen ejo bazanyicyo they are going to kill me no nereka mpunge so let me run away uyu muhungu aba yaramubwiye ngo this boy have told oh, yeah. him no we wa mano uyu muriro you brought down fire we wakoze ibi you did this ngo babiri bararutumwe two are better than one ngiye umwe aguye undara muzo when someone falls the other one lifts them up iyo iyo mwana niwe undara muhera when someone is discouraged or weak the other one carries them aramubwiye ati no he said no fuzi ko wasenze don't you know that you pray ikagwa and the rain came down ngiye watumaga you used to send to sing let's pray uyu mudame migambi yihagara so that this plan of this woman can be started ariko ndiye muhaye umwanya but he, he did not give him a chance yaramubwiye ati peti he told him sigaraho just stay there ngo agende umunsi wose and he walked a day's journey yamusize wenyine leaving him yana mubwiye nicyo giye ku nicyagiye gukora he didn't even tell him where he was going to umwana wabandi yari yaravuye kure yaramukurikiye the young boy had left and come after him yari wa mwana wa mupfakazi wapfuye eri chaka eri yakamuzura he was the young boy that elijah resurrected nyina aravuga ati mwana wa nubone nacyo ngumariye kurikira no mugabo mujyane ariko yamutereye aho 
bitu umwana wari ufite destiny yo kuzabana na Eli yakazava mu mugabo ukomeye aramuta imana inda gutumiza Elisha ubundi we yaratumije no y'umwana uyu mwana barabaye muhanuzi ukomeye ariko wamutaye mugiye kibabaje Elijah, Elijah left the young boy alone and he was supposed to be his successor. Instead, Elisha came to succeed him because Elijah left him. Alone. The Bible doesn't talk about this boy anymore. The destiny of this boy is there. There are some that you carry and because you got discouraged, they all stayed behind. The young boy stayed behind. And he walked a day's journey. Can you imagine going from Car- uh, Carmel to Beersheba? <laughs> it's a five hour drive. Five to six hour drive. He was a man of the mountain, so he ran. And he got the wood of Beersheba. That's where the wilderness begins. The rest is the, uh, the wilderness of Paran, Kadesh Barnea, and the others. To go all the way to Sinai, which is Horeb. Self-isolation is a sign of Spiritual burnout. The fourth sign. It's suicidal spirits. Sometimes to have suicidal thoughts, even though you don't commit suicide, you are already burned out. Hmm. The suicidal spirit. Verse 4b. Verse 4 and he sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said, it's enough. Now, Lord, take my life. Do you know this man? He tells the rain to stop raining for three and a half years and the rain listens to him. And he comes up again and prays seven times and the rain comes down. A man who prays for 45 seconds and fire comes down. A man who takes 850 prophets and kills them. But look at this prayer. I would have prayed for that. Because this man was burned out. He should have asked for the fire to come down and burn Jezebel as he did for the 45 soldiers before. Did he have compassion on Jezebel not to burn her? No. No. Because when someone is spiritually burned out, they don't remember the testimonies of the past. They just look and face death. No. Inconceivable. It's under inconceivable. He went under a bridge to, to ask God to burn Jezebel. That God may save him from Jezebel. That God can give him an opportunity to live longer. Oh, yeah? No. He said, 
God is enough. Mr. Murambi, entre nous. Amaze gukura wa hanuzi, babi mugi hugu bozi. Igi ewa mkene nga pastor, ino neo yuzuze, ifuga butu wa mugi hugu ngondarambi. Muru mvibari vizima, ukunu kuna ni wamumuka. He said it's enough. What was he saying is enough? He had killed all the prophets of the idol and he was supposed to be the pastor of the nation. This is spiritual burnout. Ngumugiti chumurotemo. Under a broom tree. Broom tree. Aba nyarwanda na aba na beza chana. Umurotemo na giti. Mugira chitwa uchu. Ni jambo jigihe wala uchitwa rotemo. Rotemo ni ni kinu kimeze nki nki giti marimo abone igiti cyamaho amenshi ariko gifite nk'inzu gifite eh okay mubyita bamwe ivunzi abandi mubyita donc cya giti kimeze nk'inzu ushobora kwicaramo nicyo rotem rotem mu gihe burayo ni igiti gifite amababi ariko ashobora kukubakira nk'inzu kicaramo a broom tree is a rero bakitsu mu rotem kuko tutagira iryo jambo ariko ni rotem rotem no kuvuga ngo ni biti byinshi ariko kimwe ni rotem the broom tree is a big tree that has space underneath where someone can stay or lay. Actually, a broom, a broom tree. It's a broom tree. So the broom Niko byagenze umuntu uri musaba gupfa muri gahunda y'Imana zafa no if someone asks to die and they are in the plan of God they are not going to die Elijah went under the broom tree and asked God to basically kill him umuka ukuyahura the suicidal spirit ni kimenyetso cyuko umuntu yamanutse afite umunaniro ukabije w'amaranga mutima ndetse no mu it's a sign of emotional decline and spiritual burnout. The fifth sign that will show you someone who's burned out. It is the spirit of comparison. Comparison. Verse 4c it says for I am no better than my fathers. Sinduta wa ubuiza. I am no better than these. Haruwa vuzengo usenabo. Did anyone ask you to look like others? Ufitu kwa uteye, ufitu kwa usa, ufitu kwa umeze. Tuzi kompare na bandi, uigira nye kwa bandi. You have a unique way you look, a unique way you are. Do not try to compare yourself with others. Iisi. This world. Umundu esea ijemo kugitiche. Each person came to it on their own. Isn't that the case? You may be born at the same time, but you came by yourself. Even twins. The first one comes out and the second one follows, but they are coming from the same womb. The way we don't count at the same time is the same way we should not compare ourselves. There are people who are going to heaven wakunanirwa ubundi ri wenyine uri hariye shimira imana ibyo yakugize nuko yakugize birahagije many people compare themselves and they ask themselves why they don't achieve like other people do not try to compare yourself with others because you did not come to this earth at the same time just be content with, with what you have mutsukuri uri hariye you are unique Tukabone mwene so yaguza imodoka ngo nawe uvuge ngo nange nange bafite imodoka no wewe byende no. imana yagutindije ari kwiza guhindeka Don't look at your relatives Mutangira no, gusaba ka modoka irakaguha indege ndizabikiguhaye Here wewe bikwigiranya kubandi 
don't look at your relative and start asking yourself, why have they bought a car and I haven't? Maybe you, you are planned to have a, a plane. So if you continue to complain, you're going to get a car and that's it. Joseph tried to uh, get Jacob. Joseph tried to, Jacob tried to compare himself to Esau. No, Esau. Esau. He said, why don't you give me uh, your beans since I'm going to die? Come here after. The problem he had, Il a he, sa famine. he exaggerated his hunger. Exaggerated sa famine. He said, if you don't give me the food, I will die. He said, if you it was for 30 minutes. He could have waited for 30 minutes and kept his birthright. But he chose the beans and lost his birthright. If you want to look like your neighbor, you will lose your future. You have a future that is different from your neighbors. Amen. Amen. You have your future that is different from mine. Don't look, 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 look at the other people, don't look at me and try to imitate. No, be yourself. The reason why he wanted to die, he said, I am not like my father's. People are comparing themselves, but in the past, the people didn't have the technology we had. They didn't have shoes. They didn't have the same things that we have. So stop comparing yourself from people from the past. You are in your own time. Those were just signs. That showed that someone is weak. And if they are not solved, they become a disease and even death. Spiritual burnout is caused by what? I will talk about five major causes. The first thing that causes spiritual burnout is in Intensive spiritual warfare. The second thing is intense activities. Number three, failure to care for spiritual tools. Number four is disappointment with God. Number five, loneliness. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the first cause. The first cause it is spiritual confrontation or warfare. Brethren, the Bible says, First Kings 1840. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Every success opportunity that someone has has burnout. Burnout. 
When someone is offered a crown, it's because they have worked hard. You see people running in the field. And then they say, this person has won. As they are preparing to reward them, that person is still breathing hard. Every success has burnout. If you are not careful to take care of that burnout, you can actually fall. A very simple example. When you are a young person at school, and you pass your exam, and you pass your exam, you have worked hard for it. You must rest. I just finished a very serious exam. Difficult. And I believe that I have have done other exams. But the one I did the other day it's a midterm exam. It was a very difficult exam. It's it's an open book exam. The exam that it has open book is very difficult. But the professor It is not a factual exam. It's an exam that you must uh, convince the teacher. I asked the teacher, the professor, why don't you tell me where I should focus my study? And he laughed. He told me to go and review everything from the first year all the way to the fifth year. I had no time for that. We started the conference on on Thursday. And the amazing thing, there there is no break. I was doing the exam and we're still having classes. We started the retreat at 6 and I finished the exam at 5. I was coming from Spain in the conference and I was studying there too. We, 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 we studied and I had the exam. This is what happened. Because of sitting down too much, my legs sw- swallowed. And the book that has 600 pages to read four of them and to go to the fifth one. The teacher gave me four questions. And each question had five parts. And I asked myself, what can I answer? Afterwards, I did the exam, but it was difficult. I gave it to you. I'm not going to tell you whether I passed or not. That is my secret. That's my secret. Don't ask me and don't assume. All I know is my, my feet got feet. That is the most important information you must keep. Until now, I have not re- recovered fully. I have not recovered fully. To sit for 10 hours in one place, when you stand up, and you feel like your foot is heavier. And my foot did not look like my, my, my foot. After the exam, of course, he came to grade me. 
mvuge teri me yifuza ko mvuga <laughs> niba vuze ngo ngiye ku rusengero uvuge ngo ngiye kuri Zion takuta avuga Zion akagukati nota ntabwira no Zion ni rusengero ni bimwe bikaba rero impaka murumva mwe nicyo kizame ni kizame cya kidasaba logic gisaba kwemeza gusa umuntu ibyo we bimurimo anyway after grading my exam i realized that it was more about his own conviction and his own preference he wanted me to say exactly what he wanted me to say the same vocabulary the exact same things but i got burned out okay nkurunziza naragitsinze the good news is that i passed it ariko but charamvunye i i i was so tired even now i haven't recovered i have another injury i would have completed my 5 years of hebrew and he told me that we are going to meet again eh nzo mwereke oya sinzi ko nzamwereka ko biragoye biragoye it's very difficult I understood and they did not give me a break we continue to study when you something when you something like that, you have burnout and you must take time to rest if you don't do so and you continue to go according to that when you have a marriage and you have a wedding and you don't have time to have your honeymoon you actually build, you build your marriage when you buy a house and you don't have time to celebrate every success that you have will leave burnout even if you don't feel it even failure is the same when you fail and you don't have time to recover it becomes very difficult to take the prophet to bring down the rain, to bring down the fire, to bring all the Israelites to go to Ahab. It was spiritual warfare. To fight against 850 people, you pray, I will also pray. And he did not truly believe that God will heal But you have convinced people that the God who brings the fire will do it. So. And our God does And he did not instruct him. Can you imagine? Elijah did not agree with God to bring down the fire. He did it by faith. And Elijah did not have the agreement of God to bring down the fire. He did it in faith and for him to do so and convince people was a great spiritual warfare. He had fought in the spirit. This fight in the spirit leaves you burned out. This spiritual warfare every success you have it leaves you with burnout. Even if you gain or have problems, you stay with your homes when you have you have burnout you can celebrate that a mother has given birth but she is still tired even love has burnout you love someone you have burnout 
you also have time to Kuche wa fiance bahora bashwana nuko batagira umwanya wo kuruhuka igiye cyose mvugisha mvugisha ni imvune why do engaged people always fight is because they have no time to rest they are always arguing niba hari abantu bashwana ku isi na abafyanze if there are people who fight at the kane niba hari abantu bakagombye kuba bumvikana na abafyanze and the people should be in our harmony bashwana bakagira icyumweru batavugana but they fight and they spend a week without talking why ye tape bagezemo kibaje kumenya neza ko harimo imvune yanje kugira ngo mubahungu bose ukunduriye mubakobwa bose ukunduriye ni imvune ubugezeho hari imvune y'icyo kintu hari price hari gikiro the step they made doesn't they don't know that they must take some time to rest to choose someone out of many people leaves you with burnout inambara yo mu mwuka rero igisubizo cyayo ni iki kugira ngo umuntu ayikire what is the solution for the spiritual warfare no kwambara intwaro zo mwuka it is to put on the spiritual weapons iyo uri mu rwana igihe cyose umaze kurwana igihe cyose umaze kugera kuri six ugomba kwambara intwaro zo mu mwuka intwaro zo mu mwuka ziratandukanye n'izo mubiri after you have fought and succeeded you must put on spiritual weapons and they are different from the weapons of the flesh intamara intwaro zo mu mwuka nizi what are the spiritual weapons uretse zivugo mu bayefeso gatandatu 10 13 gukomeza 18 uretse zira zivugo except for the ones in Ephesians 6:10 hari zindi there are others iyo wageze kuri 6 ikomeye when you have reached great success ugomba guhita wambara guca bugufi you must be humble kuko yuciye bugufi because if you are humble ubasha kuri covering you are able to recover ari ki ukomeje kugendera mu birere bya 6 but if you continue to be Suck, uh, proud in your success urahanu kukagwa hasi biteyo you are going to fall ibibiri iravuga ngo ni umara gukora ibyo mwa tegekewe gukora ngo muzavuye ngo turinga turi mbata zimbura mu maro the bible says after you have accomplished what you must do say that you are worthless servants inambara yo mumuka indikwara zo mumuka niki where the spiritual work what no kumenya ibintu byose wageze kubisubiza imana it is to give everything back to God. Jose, you are smart. You say, no, it's not me. It is God. You are actually you are giving your burnout and your uh, your tiredness to God. To go back to your knees. And to say, God, the glory is yours. You are actually fighting the spiritual burnout. To defeat the spiritual burnout. It is to give God. After Elijah brought that Jezebel and Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. He thought he was the one who brought it down. Elijah thought that he killed the prophet. Yes, God used it. But the one who did it was God. If he had given the battle to God, he would say, I'm not the one to be killed, it's God. Because God is the one who sent me. God would have fought for himself. Every time you pull on or you have success, you must give the glory to God. That is the spiritual weapon. This success belongs to you you must attribute your success to God for his name to be glorified instead of yours amen amen ku murongo wa 13 Ephesians 6 verse 13 let's read 13 ngo nuko rero mutware intwaro zose z'Imana kugira ngo mubashe gukomera ku munsi mubi kandi murangije byose mubashe guhagarara mudatsinzwe urangije kurwana mbere yo kurwana wambara intwaro nurangize ukomeza uzambare ngo ubashe guhagarara udatsinzwe therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand you must put on the spiritual weapons before and after the warfare having done all umaze kurangiza akazi wagomba gukora ukomeze wambara intwaro Having done all, continue to wear the put on the, the spiritual weapons. Continue with humility. Continue to be good. Continue to be human. Continue to have favor. In the great things, in the good things, 
you are not going to be burned ariko turi nubwo mu mwuka iyo byabaye ibyacu ariko iyo ari ibyimana ikomeza idutiza imbaraga zayo we become burn out when we take the success and attribute to ourselves but if we give it back to god it will belong to god buri kintu cyose ukora every day hariho confrontation ni imbaraga zo mwihima buri kintu cyose ugera tushobora kugera ku kantu satana atabanje kugacama bimwe turabizi ibintu ritubizi rero niyo mpamva ga six kaba gato kaba kanini wagezeho yuga ari kuvuga ngo mana ndagushimiye nibyawe wiyambika intwaro zo mwuka we any success even small successes they have they include uh, spiritual confrontation satan will attack you for anything so you must always put on the weapons and give god the glory impamvu ya kabiri yo kunanirwa mu mwuka the second reason for spiritual burnout ni mirimo myinshi kabije gukora cyane it is intense activities imirimo myinshi kabije intense activities iyo wakoze cyane when you work too much bisaba kuruhuka you must rest iyo dafashe break if you don't break biragoye it becomes njubabwira i am speaking to nta break ngira i never take a break uburyo nange ko ndibwiriza utagira ngo ndimwambwiriza nange ndibwiriza i'm also preaching to myself nange umwoka wera ko arambwira even the holy spirit is telling me hari giye tuvuga mu gara ngo twebwe natwe biratureba nange birande even what we are saying concerns me as well gukora cyane to work hard bikeneriki kuruhuka it requires to rest gukora cyane working hard ni imwe mu mpamvu zituma haba kunanirwa mu maranga mutima no kunanirwa mu mwuka causes you to have spiritual decline uh, emotional decline and spiritual burnout marko gatandatu karindwe kugeza ku 13 mark 67 to 13 marko ibice bitandatu karindwe kugeza ku 13 mark 67 to 13 bukeye yesu bracket yesu ahamagara abo 12 ahera ko atuma babiri babiri abaho ubutware bwo gutegeka abadayimo and he called the 12 to himself jesus called the 12 to himself and began to send out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits abihanangeza kutajya kutajyana ikintu cy'urugendo kiretse inkoni yonyine ati mwijyana impamba cyangwa imvumba cyangwa makuta mu mifuko yanyu he commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff no bag no bread no copper in their money belts ahubwo mu kweti nkweto kandi nti mwambare na makanza abiri but where send those and not put on two tunics kandi arababwira ati inzu yose muzacumbikamo abari yo mugumamo mugezaho muzayicumbukuriramo and he said to them in whatever place you enter a house stay there until you depart from that place aho abantu batazabacumbikira nti babemere ni muvayo muzakunkumura umukungu gwo mu birenge byanyu ngo bibabere kimenyetso cyo kubahamiriza and whoever will not receive you near or no hear you when you depart from there shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them nuko baragenda bigisha abantu ngo bihane so they went out and preached that people should repent kumurango wa 13 verse 13 birukana badaimoni benshi basiga abantu pardon basiga mavuta barwaye benshi barakira and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them murebe yesu abwiye abigishwa be jesus is telling his disciples babiri babiri two by two ngiye kubohereze mwivuga butumwa i'm going to send you to preach the gospel ndi mwitwaza ifaranga nta makuta don't take any money tutwara imyenda ibiri don't take two tunics tiyagira ikindi utwara don't take anything tutwara imvumba y'amazi don't take agacupa kama don't take any water container ndabazi muri mwe mukunda kurya ntutware impamba don't take any food fata gakoni just take your staff unumva yo mabwiriza imagine those instructions hanyuma mbohereje austin kuvuga ubutumwa and i'm sending you to austin to preach the gospel tafaranga bafite baratege imodoka they have no money to Ni catch inkweta. the bus they are going to mutajana inkwete byiri don't, don't take two shoes muje kuvuga ubutumwa and go ni mugera austin when you get to austin mukomange knock on the door ni babiri babiri they are two by two aba hano mwatwakira can you open the door urinde who are you turabavuga butumwa we are preachers mwaducumbikira can you host us ngo niyemera if they agree mwinjire go in niyanga if they refuse mukomange kumuturanya go to the neighbor muje gukora kazi go and serve timujanye gahunda 
you have no plan do not tell them when you are going to leave that house you don't host someone who, who doesn't and you don't know when they are going to stay stay in the house until you leave it when you feel like the mission is done if that person is it's not easy for someone to host you and they don't know when you are going to leave and the disciples left they went to be hosted the they preached the gospel they preached they preached the owner of the house maybe the owner of the house could not ask them when they would leave maybe they went to their neighbor and they said I have guests who don't want to leave and the worst thing about this is when you pray for someone they are healed, they come to their houses and try to be hosted as well. When you do something good to someone, they are going to try to come to you. The others who bring their sick people to those houses. And there was no oil anymore in the house. Bring me some oil to anoint this sick. And they didn't give money to buy the oil because they don't have money. This was a difficult situation. Okay. Even yourself, it's difficult for you to comprehend to not have any contribution where you are staying, yet you, are, you have been instructed. And they came back. The demons had left. Jesus, Jesus even said, I saw Satan falling like lightning, meaning they did a great job. They had done the work. They had been activity intense. They had worked very hard. They worked. They, they spent the day working. I remember when we started the ministry in Rwanda. I would go home at 3 a.m. And I would get to the church at 9 a.m. To the uh, cave. I will find people who are sick. People who have demons. People who have mental issues. Because of different issues. We would pray and pray and pray. For our demon to leave, it would take three hours for those who pray for demons. It's, it's like going to a doctor where they just touch you and then you leave and they give you another appointment. To cast out a demon, it's an argument. You pray until 3 a.m. in the morning without even drinking water. You go and sleep. Before you fall asleep, people know. They will say, now he's gone mad. Before you sleep, you get up and go back. I spent almost four years until we started the church in 1995. From 1995. I had not slept for three hours. Day and night. Other times you'll be preaching, others you other times you'll be casting out demons. That kind of work is very difficult. If you're not careful, you would fall. You'll be discouraged. Spiritually speaking, you are going to decline. 
You are going to be weak in the spirit. And that's how the disciples were. What is the solution for this issue? It is to take time for physical rest. Because when you rest, after you have rested, you recover your strength. You are able to travel for another journey. You see how we work in these countries. Two shifts. You spend the night working. And you work during the day at home. And you get tired. You must take vacation sometimes. Let's look at the people who live here. They work nine to ten months. They don't have a director. Tukongera out simple People who don't take vacation, people who don't rest, they act out of frustration and every small thing would frustrate them and they react in a bad way. So resting is important just like the people we found here take vacation. You must take vacation. Yes, sir. Jesus says it in Mark 930. 232. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. 31. Yes, Jesus didn't tell them. You did well, my children. That's not what they needed. What did he tell them? What did he tell them? What and he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a de- deserted place and rest for a while. He did not congratulate them. He did not show any excitement. Instead, he directed them to rest. For there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. Do you know what you And I'm asking you to do Muzemera. 
Ngiye gupanga twese rimwe tuzavye mu bwato tujye Bahama. Se twese tuzakorera amateranano mu bwato. Mubika amafaranga ibi tuzabigira. Ngo bajahe mu bwato. Bajaho abantu bataba ngo biherere. Ngibi ngibi ndabibasabye nyuma y'imyaka yo gukora muri America wayigeze mu ruharuhuka mu nyemere tuzafata ubwato. Tukodesha ubwato. Tuzamanuke tujye Bahama se twese niyo tuzakora amateraniro turye turuhuke dukina ma ping pong tonke ahatari abantu ahatari abantu ibi ndabibasabye itororo ryose nabankurikira ba icyake nawe muzaza twese tuzari hu bwato tuva tuzenguruke tujye Bahama se cyangwa tujye Alaska twese tujye mu bwato kugira ngo turuhuke imiro ya Afrika twagize ni imiro twagize ani giye kirekire ni mu binyemerera ubunyine ndashiraho abagiye kubitegura okay so I'm going to organize a cruise for everyone who wants to join, even the people on each church, so we can go and rest all the tiredness that we have uh, uh, acquired. <laughs> they were Jesus said, Let's go to the boat. There's no muruhuke. You can rest. Uwe uwe. You can be yourself. You don't have to have a tie. No. We are just going to go around. And then we'll go to a deserted place. We'll go from Bahamas. We'll go from Alaska. Everyone will be able to carry this church. The reason why you react the way you react aggressively is because you are tired. You need to rest. Do you want me, do you want me to prepare this? They went to the boat. All of us to the boat. Amen. Amen. All of us will go to the boat. All of us. Muzumva ubutamu bw'ubuzima. Ubu turabihi ubuzima benshi urangu wansubiza muri Afrika gukora iki muri ziriya ntambara n'inzara. Ibiki buvugisha numuruho. You will numuruho. You will be able to enjoy life. Right now you are wanting to go back to Africa is because you are tired. Ariko nuga rukuvuye iruza bango mana warakoze kwa mpaye wa mpaye igihugu America. Impamvu mutayikunda numuruho ta wakunda handa ruhira. The reason why you don't like this country is because you don't rest. Nitugarukiriya muzongere mu ngwire ngo nkumbu ya Afrika. Ihita yibagira no mwanya guko imuruho wose wagiye anyway. When we come back you not long to go back to Africa. Imamvu ya gatatu yo kunandirwa mu mwuka. The third reason nukudaha ibikoresho by'umwuka gaciro. Failure to care for spiritual tools. Ibyo ni ibihe. What is that? Dufite Bibiliya. We have the Bible, Holy Communion, the House of God, Guterana, Fellowshipping, the Book of Hymns, the Anointing Holy, all those things, when you don't value them, you will have spiritual burnout. Let me tell you what happened. Judges 15, verse 14, to 20, Judges 15, 14 to 20. Ageze ilehi, aba filisteba musanga ni zurusaku. Mazu muka uiteka muza wachane, imigozi ya rimu dadi ya mawako ihindu kangi miguegwe, ishiriri. Ibi muhambirie, bila dohoka, bimuva kumawako. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flags, that is burned with fire and his bones broke loose from his hands. Murongo wa 15. Nuko boni gufwa rya umusaya w'indogobe ararisingira aryikisha abantu igihumbi. Verse 15 He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it and killed a thousand men with it. Nuko Samson aravuga ati, "Ngwerega umusaya w'indogobe ngwibirundo nibirundo. Umusaya w'indogobe mwikishije abantu igihumbi." Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. 
Nuko maze kuvuga atyo agira ate agira ate agira ate kare kana mu karebe neza umusaha windogo umaze kwica abandi bihumbi sibyo amaze kuba ngo nguzi ko nisha abandi bihumbi bihumbi bwa afatiki ajugunya umusaya wari mu ndokize aho handa hitwa iramati lehi ramati lehi ramati no musozi lehi no musaya na gasozi ki misaya niko bisobanura and so it was when he had finished speaking that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called that place Ramat, Ramat Lehi, Jawbone Hill. Agumuma. Agirate. Agirate. Agwa iki. Umuma chan. Atakambiru ite karamu wirati. Wadu kirishi jukubo ko kumugara guwao. No niño ta irangi chango mumabo kwe watara kebwe. Then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? His brethren came and took him, and they said, We want to give you to the Philistines. You have provoked them. You have burned their feet. Instead of us dying, you are, we are going to deliver you. He told them, allow me that you, my brethren, you not kill me, but give me to the Philistines. Why? He had been anointed to fight the Philistines, not his people. If you catch me, allow me that, agree that you not kill me. will not kill you, but we bound you and we will deliver you to the Philistines. They bound him. They bound his feet. And they carried him. And, they, and when among the Philistines who had spears, and they said, This is the man who killed you. Peace. Give us peace. And the Philistines screamed. They were very happy. When they bound him, when he was bound, the power of God came upon him. And the ropes fell apart. When they fell apart, he saw near him a, a jawbone of a donkey. Just a jawbone. He took it. And the Philistines are there. And he he used it with the power of God and he killed a thousand men and then he laughed he said a job of a donkey hips upon hips with the job of a donkey I have killed a thousand men and then he threw it away at that moment he became very thirsty if you, dis, if you neglect the tools of the Bible, you don't read the Bible, you don't know where your Bible is, you don't, you don't anoint yourself, you don't come to the Holy Communion, you don't give your offerings, all the spirits, if you neglect them, you will fall in the spirit. These are strong spiritual tools. People think that these are, normal, these are normal things. things. But they are very powerful. For you to read even one verse a day, to come to fellowship, and you partake of the Holy Communion, and you go to the cell, and you see other saints, it strengthens you spiritually. Just the offering that you are giving. He speaks on your behalf before God. The Bible says that the offering will take you to the grave. When you give an offering, God doesn't only remember, he remembers your descendants. Those are spiritual tools that people neglect. You are throwing, you are despising something and it is the jawbone that at that moment he became very thirsty. 
That's the same thing that happened to Elijah. He went under the broom tree and he asked to die. This was not easy. He became very thirsty. Their fellowship, the fellowship of the saints, kushirikiana kwa ndugu kuna burudisha moyo donc iyo duterana twongera gusubizwa mu imbaraga when we fellowship we are strengthened again we wish nafsi yangu i restore mon âme en suivi ntege mu bugingo you restore my soul donc du suivi mu imbaraga we are strengthened again tuza rike gutera do not stop fellowshiping. Do not stop fellowshiping with sins. It is going to keep you from spiritual thirst. What can we do to solve this issue? It is to be under a spiritual shadow. When we are under a spiritual shadow, there are things that God does. There are spiritual food that we get. We eat spiritual food. To be under the spiritual shadow, we eat spiritual food. Judges 15, 19 to 20. He cried out saying, hakore. So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi and water came out and he drank and his spirit returned and he revived. Therefore he called its name En Harohe Hakore, Hakore which is in Lehi to this day. Ngonuko amara imyaka 20 mu gihe cy'abafilisitie ari umucamanza w'Israel. Yongeye kugira indi myaka 20 ariko yaragiye gupfu uwo munsi kuko yasuzuguye ibintu byo mu mwuka ariko maze gusaba imana arambaza iki dusaba no kuba munsi y'igicucu kwegera kandi imana tuka restaurer relation yacu imana nasuzuguye ibyawe ndagarutse imbere yawe ngo imana igusubiza mu imbaraga zizatumugira indi myaka 22 he judged israel for 20 years in the days of the philistines coming under the shadow of god humbling yourself before god we give you strength to continue the journey Eni hakore. Eni hakore. Bila soba wano nangu niriwa. Eni niriwa. It means it's the source of the well. Eni vya mwijambo aine. Eni comes from aine. Aine niki. What is aine? Nijishu. It is the eye. Nijishu liva mga mariru mutonyi. The eye comes, from the eye comes tears. Niho, iso koba yita eni, aine. So the well is called eni. Havamu mitonyi yama. That's where you have the drops of water. Iriwa, yu wamba je hakore. Nugu hama gara. The well of the one who cried out, the one who cried out, to tell God, if you get to this time, when you are thirsty in the spirit, and God is far away from you, the things of God are not in you. Call upon God. Go under the shadow of the Most High, and God will bless you. 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all your fathers, all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. Bose bakabatirizwa munsi y'icyo gicucu no muri iyo nyanja gutegekwa na Mose. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate from the spiritual food. And the drink the drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The food of heaven is Amasengesh. the prayer, Indirimbo. songs, fellowship, coming together, it strengthens us. Elia when Elijah was under the broom, the angel touched him. When he woke up, he found a, a cake uh, on, the, on the fire. He found a cake on the fire. And he saw some water. And he ate. And he drank. And he slept again. The second time, the angel touched him. And he also found water. And 
Ararjarangu. And ate and drank. And he walked for 40 days and 40 nights. And he walked for 40 days and 40 nights. The fellowship of the saints allows you to have a long journey going where God has destined. But if you don't do so, if you don't do so, you face many challenges. This is the time where we must go under the shadow of the Lord and not neglect the spiritual tools. Use your gift. If you are a singer, 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 if you are an intercessor, if you are a preacher, preacher, this is the time when you are going to be strong. If you neglect your gift, you will go dry and you also fall in the hands of the Philistine. The third thing it is to be disappointed with God. <laughs> to be disappointed with God. God, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this person leave? Why did this happen? Why is it just me? Why is it my kids? What is it? Why is it my, wife? Wife? my husband? And then you get to a point where you are disappointed. When you are disappointed in God, you are in the difficult times. You are in the difficult times. It brings you into spiritual death. Joshua 7. Joshua 7. He said, Wherever you are, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us all that we may have, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan? No, no, man, and that's how Oh Lord, what should I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off your name from earth. Then what will you do for your great name? Remember God told Joshua no enemy will stand before you. I will arise Moses. I will be with you. You you win against your enemies. He had many promises. Do you know why people are disappointed? It is to have promises that are not fulfilled. Does this God speak or not? Disappointment. They are disappointed. The person you were hoping And the prophets who even prophesied that they will be healed, but they died. God is saying you are going to have a wedding and the boy you. And you find out that they have married someone else. You are not angry at the prophets, you are angry at the prophets. Because you don't know if God truly said it, you just accuse him and dis- you get disappointed in him. If God was near us, you would have uh, thrown But he's far away from us. You just fight with the wind. Don't get disappointment. To be disappointed. You are angry with God. You ask if he's the one who spoke. You promised me. I will win against the enemies. Now I'm being defeated. Joshua overcame in Jericho. Without fighting. When he saw a small no, no, no. He he said, no. I will send a few men. We are going to take Ooh. over that little city. When he sent the men, 27 of them, others, others went went in, and the enemy ran after them. When Joshua, he saw people, he 
Joshua ati kaba karabaye and Joshua said ngo aryama hasi he fell on the ground he tore his clothes he, 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 was, he was in sackcloth for the whole thing. screaming God what is this what have you done to what me why did you allow us to cross the Jordan who was he angry with God the anger you have against God have no found, uh, basis it is because you are spiritually tired you are tired you are angry at God God is not the one who did that but you are angry at him but it's not him many people are disappointed don't tell me about that God no 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 ikindi ngezuko tuvugana nayo I know how I speak to him. Have you seen those people? I, I, I deal with God privately. What, what do you deal with him? What do you deal with him about? You insult him, you rebel, and you do all these kind of things. You rebel, and you do all these kind of things. How can we heal from this disappointment. There is a one solution. To know the root cause. Until you know the root cause of what's causing you to be sick, you always be disappointed in God. You are angry spiritually. What was the root cause? What was the root cause here? What was the root cause here? So the Lord said to Joshua, get up on verse 10, why do you lie thus on your face? Because the people of Israel were afraid of the people. They 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 were afraid of the people. Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them for they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both, both, have both stolen and deceived and they have also put them among their own stuff. They, Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore until you destroy their enemies. <laughs> Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because that says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. The reason why your people die prematurely. It is not the issue with God. The reason why your people don't get married. It is not God. The reason why they have divorces. Or men are divorced. It is not God's fault. It is not the fault. You must look for them. Stop being disappointed in God. It is your generational curse. It is your generational curse. It is between you. In your family there is a problem. The problem is not with God. The reason why people just die. No, It is not God. There is an issue in your family. You must pray for it. You you must know the root cause. Elisha told them, show me the source of the water. When he threw the water and Jericho was in, what was the issue? In the blood of when they built Jericho without God's agreement what was the source in the water 
Everyone who yeah, gives you, you, whether it's a man or a girl, girl, they did not give birth. The war that is a child is not God's fault. To premature si to is not your God's fault. To divorce si is not God's no, fault. Karande. There is a curse that we must look for a solution. God said Joshua, get out. Sleeping is not going to the issue is among you. You did not obey what I told Pero you. Zuka, so get out. Call to, to people yukuri. and you know the truth. When he called for people, they found the account of Judah had done the accursed thing. They said, let's remove the accursed thing. They stoned him. After they stoned him, with his, cows, with his wife, with his children, all of them God then said, I will Israel. They got to I and conquered every territory of Israel. The reason why there's a defeat in your house, in your family, there is something. You must know the root cause, you must pray for it. Why are you sorrowful? God is in heaven but he's telling you to look for the root cause. Look for the root cause and you will find it. When you seek me, I will tell you. When Joshua saw God, he told him the issue and they were saved. Amen. 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 So don't be angry at God. But seek the root cause of that issue. The issue in your family Amen. Amen. Someone called me from Canada. I was in Michigan. It was in 2004. In 2002. He said, She said, I am afraid of dying. And I feel like I'm going to die. And this is how they die in my household. In my family. The age I have is the way my relatives died. So, I don't know. But people of Michigan told me that you are praying for people. It was in 2001. Elisha was like an, a year so. I prayed for her. After I prayed, I started cast, casting out the spirit of fear. And God told me, He's, she's not going to heal. She's going to die. I say, God, what is it? Tell me, ask her what she has kept in her luggage that she knows. I ask your mother, forgive me. Just consider what I'm going to tell you, whether it's true or not. There's something that you have kept in your luggage. Goya. And she said, no. She said, you ha- she said yes. It's a picture of my grandfather. No, no, she said, yes. Great grandfather. Yes. 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 Grandfather. He was among a, a noble family. She said, yes, I kept the picture. God is saying to remove that picture. That picture of your, father, of your grandfather. There were people who consulted uh, witch, witches in order to make decisions. And anything that they achieved, they had to consult wizards and witches. Presence, photo, And the presence of that picture in that family is causing everyone to die. If she removes it, she's not going to die. Do you know what she did? She had taken it from her 
turi mu bintu bye mbone iyi photo ndayizana and she said uh, my relative just passed away and i took the picture from no no to subiyemo when we the one who just passed away took the picture from someone else. They had just passing it away. From, from I told her to burn it. She burned it. And she is a woman and she is old. She was young at that time. Look, don't be disappointed by God. You must look for the root cause of what's happening in your family. The last reason is loneliness or the spirit of loneliness. When you take yourself out and you stay alone and you isolate yourself, you'll be burned out. You don't you don't pray. You online. You 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 think that you are following online but you are distracted, you are answering messages and doing all kinds of things. You will be burned out. No, it is impossible. You cannot sit online and follow the whole entire service. It's probably one percent of you. People. This spirit of loneliness took over Elijah, but he wasn't alone. He also took Jesus. This is a very strong spirit. Christoph, <laughs> I miss Chancho sang a song saying there is nothing that kills more than loneliness. Loneliness is a very bad thing. To be alone is very bad. Matthew 26 36 Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and say to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. They got to get Gethsemane with the disciples and he told them, stay behind. I'm going to pray on my own. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he became to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. He is with Peter and John and James. And James said, he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. So he left them alone and went by his He was with the 11 disciples without Judas. He left them. But you, Peter, and James and John, because they were together at the mountain of transfiguration. When they got here, he said, I'm so sorrowful. I'm so sorrowful. You stay here. I'm going to pray. Loneliness is very... This is what the Bible says. Because he said, he said, he said, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying sorry it's uh, 41 and he was withdrawn from there about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed Jesus 
akayira nabi kwepa we ariko kameme bibugushaka urumva kwa ha Yesu yari down ibi bihe umuntu abibamo wumva udashaka kuvugisha umuntu waba wenyine he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as you will these are the times when you feel alone and jesus was supposed to fulfill the will of god but he was starting to doubt because he was lonely this is Jesus and being in agony, he precious, precious. being in agony he prayed more earnestly than his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground this was because of the pressure the word getsemani in hebrew nahantu bamenagura imbuto pressure pressure is where the it's like a vineyard press nuko ngo ho yesu yarari where jesus was ni ho bafata imyelayo it's where they take the no, no, olives and they break them and they break them and make them N- into oil. Semani, so that's what gets semani yes we are umutima wo usa no bari mo benga kugeza ke yavuye mo ibyo yabyamaraso jesus was being pressed until he started sweating blood ah yari wenyine he was by himself abonye bikomeye when he saw that he ngo garuka abigishwa bari asanga basinziri abaza petero bati harya ti mubashiye kubana maso nange sahimwe donc yari akene yabantu ariko abantu bisinziriye kandi nawe yari yabahunze iya nabegera bagira ngo bahunyize ngo kanguka undi yagira ngo ahunyize kanguka ariko nabari yabasize nawe bari sinzirira siko bimeze kuko yifita gahinda ntawo bimenye abantu bazi gusa ngo gira gutya gira gutya ariko ntibazi impamvu utagize gutyo umuntu biroroshye cyane gukubwira gukora ikintu ariko ubuza gahinda kakirimo then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to peter what could you not watch with me for one hour he left them al- alone and he's now asking them to support them support i was asking one woman to go back to her husband and she had a, ch- a child. she left the child with her husband and their family she was also a member of my church. i called her i said woman I have not come to talk to you. I have asked, I'm coming to ask you to get ready because I'm going to take you back home. She didn't tell two things. She said, I, I am a, a, an only child. I am an only child. Did they tell you that? I said no. The child that I have is my everything. I'm not going to tell you no mama. for a mother Wikinege. who is a, a child, living her own, own child. Don't say that you're going to take me back home. Don't say that. You don't know the issues I have. And then I started thinking again. In this time, the person knows their own issues. That's why a person says, leave me alone. I want to be alone. Instead of being alone, there is power that is going to press you to think about yourself, to think that you are abandoned, to think that you are rejected. This is where people commit suicide. This is where you find depression. Anxiety. Anxiety. You don't go in the You stay in your bedroom. You take your problem and you make it public. Everyone becomes a problem because you're not happy and everyone else should not be happy. These are difficult times. To be lonely is a sign of spiritual burnout. Jesus told them to pray and be watchful. What is this? When you get to this place, this place, where there is, you don't want anything, you are in darkness and sorrow. People are accusing you of all things. You are hated. No one is looking at you. And you feel like no one is listening to you. What can save you here? What is the solution? The honest truth. You don't need an answer from the earth. Because you have run away from the 
What helps here is a divine intervention. Only God can save you. The Bible says 43 Then the angel appeared to him from heaven strengthening him. In Luke 22, 22 the angel found him under the broom tree and touched him. At that point you only need God to touch you. Yes. He told Jesus I have no one to throw me into the Everyone else has I don't left. even believe in myself. Yes. And Jesus told him, You need an intervention from heaven heaven to leave that place. No one else can take it. It's not pastor. It is not a husband. It is not a wife. It is the angel of May the angel of the Lord touch you and strengthen you. May God bless you. May God give you to be healed. May God elevate you. Take you from loneliness. Take away the spiritual power to be strengthened to them for Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Stand up and let's pray. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Shima yes. Your promises are true, God. As the rain comes down from heaven and it comes to the ground, just as your word comes and strengthens us, may this word, God, take the person from where they are, take the people from where they are sleeping, and strengthen them. To be strengthened again. To be strong again. To be men. To be women. To pray for the younger. To rise again. To save themselves. To take them from the land. To take from the land. From this land. From these problems. Set them free. Make them well. Thank you that you have done That you are returning life. You are returning joy. You are returning joy. That you are reviving spiritual joy. That you are healing them in, the, in their spirit. The spiritual burnout. That you are healing them. The emotional burnout. We thank you for that. That people are going back to that they are becoming people. Again. That they are becoming men. That they are becoming women. That they are becoming women. That they are strong again. We thank you for that you are doing this. So. That you are prepared a good future in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. And be good to you. Go home with the Lord.